this way. Stanley thinks you're a creep. <laughs> if Stanley said nice things about you, Deirdre would have to believe him. That's if Stanley says nice things about you. No, nope, forget it. It's just the three of us again. Forever. I can't believe you're twins. How did this happen? Well, one egg split. He doesn't then... mean that. Oh, hello. Who's day to you? I don't know. <laughs> He's cute, but he ain't too swift. Who? <laughs> Here we come. Hello, my sisters. Hi, Ohaji. All right. Oh, boo. You need some help? Please. What's the combination? Um, a right 16, a left 21, uh, and a right at four. Here you go. Thank you. I used to appreciate that. <laughs> Sad, man. The way he died, man, was heartbreaking, man. Got killed in L.A. You know, a female, she lied on him, you know, then got him set up. The same female got him set up, man. Bro, man, lied on that man and got him killed. It's been going on forever, bro. And it's not just in L.A. The nature of a female, I hate to say this, it's been going on, bro. You know what I mean? And why, I have no idea. You could be the realest dude, really into her, and she don't care about you really. You know, she acting like she care because you got something she want or she trying to get up out of you. Merlin Santana was born on March 14, 1976 in Manhattan, New York. He grew up in the Washington Heights neighborhood. Both of his parents migrated to the United States from the Dominican Republic. He was the oldest of three boys, but according to his mother, Leah Santana, he almost didn't make it. He was born prematurely. The doctors told his mother that he only had a 50% chance of survival, and if he did survive, he would be considered a miracle. But despite the odds being against him, he still made it, and his mother and father felt like their firstborn child was special, so they wanted to give him a special name, and they would choose the name Merlin, the mythical wizard who was prominently featured in The Legend of King Arthur. He absolutely loved his name. He would introduce himself to everyone as Merlin the Magician. He grew up in the Washington Heights neighborhood. His mom stated that it was a very tough environment to try to raise her three boys. But at a very young age, Merlin would get the opportunity to set his path for success and to give his family a better life. When Merlin was only three years old, his mother happened to meet a talent agent who told her that her son could be a star. She told her about a national fast food ad campaign that she knew about and that they were going to be holding auditions soon. And when he went in for the role, Merlin immediately won over the producers with his charisma. And according to his mom, from that point forward, he never stopped working. He started to frequently land commercial gigs, but Merlin did have somewhat of an advantage over his peers because he could speak both English and Spanish fluently. His first on-screen movie appearance would be in the 1985 Woody Allen film, The Purple Rose of Cairo. Acting was a godsend for Merlin. He loved everything about it, and his parents would use it to keep him busy and to keep him from falling victim to the tough New York streets. Although Merlin was still a kid and enjoyed hanging out with his friends in the neighborhood, his mother said that sometimes she would have to track him down outside, and when his friends seen her coming, they would call out Merlin's name to alert him. He would take off running back to their apartment beating his mom home, making it seem as if he had been there the whole time. Merlin was a part of numerous commercials throughout the 1980s. He was working on Broadway as well. And in 1990, he was in a play called Hey Little Walter. And just so happened on the night of the premiere, Bill Cosby was in attendance as well. He was highly impressed with Merlin's acting skills and charisma to the point where he would specifically write a new character for him in his hit TV show, The Cosbys. He would play the role of Stanley, the love interest of Rudy Huxtable, the daughter of Claire and Clifford Huxtable, as well as the rival to Rudy's friend, Kenny, played by Dion Richmond, who he would form a lifelong friendship with as well. The two would also play brothers on the short-lived ABC sitcom, Getting By. Nice 
nice boat. Thanks. It's a ship. Oh, good use of string. We were ready to go. Yeah, m Mom, I'm uh, not ready yet. Haven't seen all the exhibits. <laughs> Is, uh, he the exhibit? Dad. I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Stanley. Oh, hello. Hi, how are you? Mrs. Huxtable, Dr. Huxtable. Yes. And I'm Rudy Huxtable. Merlin got to the point where he told his agent that he didn't want to do any more commercials. He wanted to strictly focus on TV and movies, and his mother wanted to support her son's aspirations. So she decided to move the family to Los Angeles in order to give Merlin even more acting opportunities, as well as taking him out of the dangerous neighborhood of Washington Heights. And it was definitely the right move. He became a main cast member on the CBS drama Under One Roof. He was also a cast member on the classic Mark Curry TV show Hanging with Mr. Cooper, and he made an appearance as the love interest on the show Sister Sister. But Merlin's profile would really start to rise in 1996, when he was selected to play the role of Ohaji, opposite of R&B star Brandi Norwood on her hit show Moesha. He became a fan favorite, and like all the other TV shows that he appeared in, he always stood out. Merlin's career would go to another level that very same year, in what would become his signature role as Romeo Santana on The Steve Harvey Show. Initially, the character of Romeo had a more traditional last name, but Merlin was able to persuade the producers to let the character have his real last name. Because he wanted to show diversity in the Latin community, he believed that when most people heard the word Latino, they had a certain look in mind, and Merlin wanted to show that they came in all types of different shades, and it was people that looked just like him. His character Romeo became a fan favorite on the show, along with his best friend Bullethead, played by William Lee Scott, who he would form a friendship with off-screen as well. His agent's phone was steady ringing with offers, and the money was pouring in. Merlin purchased a home in the San Fernando Valley, and he was enjoying a lifestyle that only Hollywood could offer. Despite loving the California lifestyle and being a celebrity, Merlin never forgot about home in New York City. He would often go back to his Washington Heights neighborhood to spend time on the block with his friends that he grew up with. This is when he would be introduced to the infamous YTC crew, a drug organization that ran the Upper West Side of Manhattan. He became fast friends with some of the top members, and he also became one of the guys. Outside of being an actor, Merlin had a passion for music. He loved to rap in particular, and he would often shout out his YTC crew in his freestyles. Merlin never got in any type of trouble with the law, nor did he have a history of drug use. But according to his friends in the YTC crew, he always had an infatuation with the streets, and over time he would form a very close bond with the YTC. Merlin had the type of personality that everybody gravitated towards. He got love from Hollywood to the streets of New York. Merlin Santana, or as we used to call him, just Merlin, was a kid from down the block on 107th Street, Manhattan Avenue. I met him through Tito. He was doing his thing, coming up, blowing up, and he used to sing, he used to rap, he was doing all kinds of things. You know, Merlin used to hang out with us, he used to be in apartments, he used to chill with us, you know what I'm saying? Joke around and be on the block. You know, it was just all good, all laugh. But Merlin had a fascination with the streets, man, and we used to try to tell him, like, yo, we wish we were you. I'm out of here. Till next time. Enjoy, y'all. Actor Merlin Santana was a natural. Handsome, talented, and charismatic. Now, he was a former child star who had made the leap to grown up success. Here I am. He loved the act. By the age of 19, Merlin is living the dream. He loved LA. He liked it a lot. In 2001, the TV show Moesha would come to an end, and after six seasons, the Steve Harvey show was canceled not too long after that. But Merlin was special because he was one of the few childhood actors who were able to make the transition to work in adult actor. He played the role of Jermaine in the early 2000s movie title Flossin. He would also act alongside superstar comedian Eddie Murphy in the 2002 buddy cop film Showtime, featuring legendary actor Robert De Niro. 
And when Merlin wasn't expanding his acting portfolio, he was working on music. He knew somebody that had a home studio that lived in the Crenshaw district. He was often accompanied by his good friend and fellow child actor Brandon Adams, who had a similar career to Merlin, known throughout the 80s and early 90s for multiple television and film roles in movies such as People Under the Stairs, The Mighty Ducks, and the mid-90s classic The Sandlot. In early November of 2002, they were hanging out at a restaurant. That's when a young woman approached their table and introduced herself as Mercedes. She told Merlin that she recognized him from the Steve Harvey show. Merlin was flattered and they exchanged numbers. And on the very same day that they met, they engaged in intimacy. Mercedes called Merlin a few days later so they could meet up again. But this time he wasn't feeling it and played her off. This made Mercedes upset. She felt like she had been used and now she wanted some get back on Merlin, so she devised an evil lie, a lie that would result in tragedy. Mercedes went to her boyfriend and told him that she had been taken advantage of, not just by Merlin, but by his friend Brandon Adams as well. Her boyfriend vowed that he would get revenge on him for what they had done to her. But on Friday night, November 8th of 2002, they would get the opportunity to put their plan in motion. It seemed like it was fate, Merlin wasn't even supposed to be in Los Angeles. He had already made plans to go back to New York City to see his family and friends, but at the last minute he got an audition in Los Angeles. He decided since he was going to be in town, he wanted to create some music for an album he had been working on, and they went to their friend's house who had the music studio in the Crenshaw district. While they were all having fun laying down tracks and making music, Merlin decided that he wanted to invite Mercedes over. He gave her the address, but it took her a while to get there. She didn't arrive at the house until 2 a.m. And when she finally did arrive, she was acting strange, pacing back and forth and looking around. Brandon saw her odd behavior and told Merlin that he felt something was off. After being at the spot for less than 30 minutes, Mercedes told them that she had to go. Brandon followed her outside to get a scope on what she was up to, and he didn't like what he was seeing. He went back inside and told Merlin what he saw and that it was time for them to go. After being on alert and looking around, they felt like the coast was clear. When they got in Brandon's car to leave, they noticed that it was red infrared lights pointed at the vehicle. They could see in the rearview mirror that two men were approaching with guns drawn. Brandon immediately took off, but his car was hit with a hail of gunfire. He took off speeding down the street to get away from the danger and thought they had made it out unscathed until he looked up and realized that Merlin was slumped over in the passenger seat. One of the bullets that hit the vehicle went into the trunk, ricocheted and then hit the headrest in the passenger seat, striking Merlin in the back of the head. Brandon wasn't shocked by what he seen and stopped his vehicle. Just so happened a passing patrol car was going by and he flagged him down trying to get help for his friend. But when the ambulance arrived on scene, Merlin was pronounced dead. The detectives on scene wanted to know who was the last person to have contact with Merlin. They found a number in his phone that had multiple phone calls from that night. They took Brandon to the police station for questioning, trying to get information on the events that led up to Merlin's death. He told them about Mercedes and how Merlin had called her over to the spot, but once she arrived she was acting strange. The police didn't have too many leads to find Mercedes, but they did have a phone number. In the morning of November 9th, the police had Brandon contact Mercedes and tell her that he wanted to meet her at the same restaurant that they had met at before. The cops didn't think that it would work, but surprisingly, she actually showed up. As soon as she arrived at the restaurant, Mercedes was arrested on murder charges. She was taken down to the precinct but very evasive when questioned about the events from the previous night. And when she did answer questions, it was all lies. She told them that her name was Mercedes, but they knew that she wasn't telling the truth. But she did tell them that she was 21 years old, and the detectives believe it because she looked it as well. After hours of interrogation, they were finally able to uncover who they were talking to. She admitted that her name wasn't Mercedes, and that her real name was Monique King. When detectives ran her background information, they realized that she wasn't 21, and that she was actually a 15-year-old runaway from a juvenile facility. Growing up, she bounced around to different foster homes with no stability leading her to turn to the streets. Police stated that in her juvenile evaluation reports, it said that she had a propensity to lie and to manipulate in order to get her way no matter what. 
The interrogation with this young lady did not start very well. You realize you're in a lot of trouble here. I didn't do anything. She is a very street savvy lady. And she, she said a number of lies. I've never seen anybody or heard anybody get shot. It just wasn't matching up. Detectives wanted to know about the two men who fired the fatal shots that killed Merlin Santana. Monique admitted that it was her boyfriend, 19-year-old Damian Gates, and his accomplice was 23-year-old Brandon Bynes. When they went to Damian's apartment to arrest him, just so happened Brandon Bynes was there as well. Both men were now in custody, but after being presented with overwhelming evidence, the two friends quickly turned on one another pointing the finger at the other person saying that they were the ones who fired the fatal shots that killed Merlin. Ballistics showed that the fatal shot came from an assault rifle, and Monique King stated that she seen her boyfriend Damien holding the rifle. In 2003, Damien Gates would be convicted of first-degree murder and the attempted murder of Brandon Adams. He received three life sentences plus 70 years. His accomplice Brandon Bynes was sentenced to 23 years after pleading guilty to voluntary manslaughter and assault with a deadly weapon. In January 2004, Monique King was found guilty of second degree murder and attempted murder. Due to her underage status, she was only sentenced to 10 years in the California Youth Authority with a scheduled release at the age of 25. Merlin's death came as a shock in the entertainment world, especially to those who knew him. He had the reputation of being a great guy, so the way that he lost his life just didn't make any sense. Steve Harvey commented on his death as well, reiterating that Merlin was a wonderful kid, and whatever happened on that night, he didn't deserve to die. But there was one person who had a different take. Merlin's former co-host on the Steve Harvey show, William Lee Scott, they were good friends in real life. And even though Merlin wasn't what you would consider a troubled individual, he said that he was aware that he liked to be somewhat adjacent to the streets, which he always felt was very dangerous. So when he heard where it happened, he wasn't shocked at all. I gotta be honest with you. I was not 100% surprised okay. when I heard Merlin had passed away. The way or, passed. or no, that he had passed or the, or the fashion or the circumstances. I was not surprised. I'm just, Merlin lived a, Merlin was a wild dude. He was super talented, but he was wild. And he was not, you couldn't tell him what to do. You couldn't tell him where to go. He wasn't afraid of anyone or anything to, to a fault, you know. It's a single freak rifle shot that kills Merlin. The bullet actually entered the trunk car went through the back seat, went through the passenger side headrest, hit Merlin Santana in the back of the head. And the fact that it took that trajectory and ended up killing Merlin Santana was just incredible. Lucky shot. Or unlucky for Mr. Santana. Merlin's mother struggled to make sense of what happened to her oldest son. When he was born, it was basically a miracle due to all of his health issues. And now his life was snatched away for absolutely no reason at all. She told a story about Merlin just a few weeks prior to his death, that he was hanging out with them at their home along with his father, and he started to tell his mom and dad that he was going to be their guardian angel. She said that his dad got upset and told him not to speak that way because words have power and meaning. But Merlin continued saying that, no, I'm right. One day, I'm going to be you guys' guardian angel. And unfortunately, his premonition would prove to be true. He told his dad he was going to be our guardian angel. And his father got upset. And he told him, I don't want you to joke like that. That's not a joke. And he said, yeah, for real, I'm, I'm going to be your guardian angel. I guess he had a feeling of something. Despite the sadness in losing Merlin, his family continues to keep his name alive especially his daughter, who was very young at the time of his death. From the moment people seen Merlin on the TV screen, it was clear that he was full of charisma and a star in the making. He had big plans for his future and dreams to fulfill, but unfortunately, his life was cut short one night on a dark street in Crenshaw. And Merlin Santana, he was only 26 years old when he died. Rest in peace, King.